thank you, praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. I already knew it in my spirit. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. I was just trying to keep quiet. Glory be to God. Right. I was just what I wasn't even going to ask. Hallelujah. But when I seen the program, hallelujah, yes. I said, glory yes. to your name, Jesus. Yes. God, I thank you, hallelujah, because he gave me a word, hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Colossians, the first chapter. And when you have it, say amen. amen. No, say I wait. I wait. I got it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Thank you. Hallelujah. I was talking to God and he was talking about it. We need to be wise. Right. 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 I said, God. He said, why is it God? A lot of times people are going to school and you guys can be seated. Hallelujah. A lot of times people are going to school and they're trying to get all kind of wisdom. Mm -hmm. they, they're trying to get all kind of education. But God said, your wisdom and your knowledge need to come from me. He said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge me, and I shall direct your path. So when you acknowledge God, that's where you get your wisdom from. Your wisdom comes from seeking him. So I was like, what can I say to your people all today? And he said, just let them know that they need wisdom. And not this world's wisdom. They need the wisdom from on high. They need to understand that they got to pick this thing up every day. And they got to begin to fellowship with me. I need a relationship with my people. That's what's going on in this world on today. It's things that's going on and we don't even understand. It's because we're not spending time with God. We're not crying out for his wisdom. We're not crying out for his guidance. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because that's exactly what we need. We need your wisdom. And then he took it to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry, he said, that their faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Our wisdom needs to be in him. Not being wise as we learn from our mothers, and our mothers taught us how to do this, they taught us how to cook, how to wash. He said, No. I used to think that when I became a wife. But no. He said, It has to come through me. You got to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and I will withheld nothing from you. I'll give you what you need. Then he took me to Proverbs 4 and 7. Wisdom is a principal thing. A principal thing. He said, but when you understand wisdom, you'll get wisdom. And with all that getting, you'll get an understanding. They go hand in hand. I said, wow, thank you, Jesus. I thank God. I, I told you guys, Colossians, but I was just giving you what God had gave me. Glory be to God. Colossians, if you have it, the first chapter starting at the ninth verse. And you have to say amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. For this cause, we also, since the day heard it, do not cease to pray for you. Paul is praying for us. He's praying on our behalf. And desire that he might be filled with the knowledge of his will. That's God's will. And all his wisdom and his spiritual understanding. God said, I want you to be filled with all my wisdom. I'm not talking about me. All God's wisdom and his understanding. Amen. And he said, that you may walk worthy in the Lord until all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in your knowledge unto God. Your walk should please God. Whatever you do, it should magnify the Lord. Whatever you put your hands to do, it should praise him. When you sow a seed, that seed should to be magnifying God. God, I'm giving this seed to you for the increase. The increase. But don't wait for when you give it to him. Glory be to God. You pray for that thing at home before you give it to him. You bless that thing before you give it to him. And it's just like a farmer. When you get up in the morning and you sow your seed, you begin to work that seed. Hallelujah. Faith without works is dead. Hallelujah. You got to begin to get in this word and work your harvest. And I'm just not talking about a harvest for a seed. I'm talking about a harvest for God's wisdom. Yes. God's understanding. Yes. That's what we need today. Yes. He said, let only your conversation be good. good. Your conduct. Good. Yes. So many people are just acting in your kind of way in the church. Hallelujah. Say a 
say and doing whatever they want to do. He said, your conduct should be pleasing. And to me, though I was not there, I'm with you always. You should be thinking that I am watching you. My mama used to tell me a long time ago, she used to say, I got eyes in the back of my head. And for a long time, I thought she had eyes in the back of my head. Because when I came home from school, she knew it. She knew who I hung out in the, in, in the yard. And she knew who I hung out in. You know, I was, she knew. <coughs> because everybody was telling her what was going on when she was at work. But see, I was like, wow. I thought my mama was wise. You know, I wanted to, I said I don't want to be like my mama, but I wanted to be like her. Because I thought she was wise. I thought she had so much wisdom that she could just tell me. But then when I found out about a day and age, when I found out about a man that died for my sin, I'm talking about some stuff I used to do, hallelujah, he forgave me for everyone. Not just some of them, I ain't talking about the little stuff. Everyone that I did, he forgave me. I said, wow, I want to know who this man I want to know him in his image and his likeness. I need to understand yes. how he can forgive and how he can know all. He's omnipotent. Know it all. I said, I want to know. Know it all. Thank you, Lord. Strengthen with us all. Might. Strengthen with his all might. According to his glorious power unto all patience. Long suffering and joy. Yes. God said, You gotta be long suffering. Long -suffering. You gotta be meek. You got to be gentle. And I'm just not talking about me and gentle waiting on God. I'm talking about to each other. You gotta wait on people. Hallelujah. If they ain't doing what you say they should be doing, pray for them. And feed on their behalf. And then watch God move. He said, You have to spend time with people, praying, laboring. Long suffering, oh, enduring. Yeah. You can't give up on people when they ain't doing it. Everybody almost called out today from the Church of Acts and Church of Acts. But I said, God, for you I live and for you I die. It don't matter. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He said, with joyful, you gotta be, you gotta be happy. That's why this Bible gives you wisdom and instruction. How he tells you, my brother, count it all joy. You got to be joy in this because it's already letting you know that danger's around. Come on. It's coming. He already let you know more to come before destruction. He's letting you know if you spend time with him. But you got to understand that. It's a twofold. You have to spend time with him. You ain't going to hit him morning if you ain't getting up meet him. And I mean meet him before the house even wake up. It's just you and God. And it's just you and him just talking. And he's telling you what you need to do every single day. Who you need to pray for, glory be to God. Who you need to visit in the hospital. That's the kind of God I serve. He said to do it with joy. Be a servant. A willing vessel. That's what we ought to do, people of God. With joy. And he said, give him thanks unto the Father. And give him thanks every day. Every day. When you wake up in the morning, say, God, I thank you for waking me up this morning. I thank you for starting me on my way. Somebody didn't get up this morning, but I thank you because you got me up, hallelujah. My back may be hurt, but to God be the glory, hallelujah. I'm going to tell that spirit, sit down on the back, glory to God. I got to go to work to feed these babies, hallelujah. That's what I say in the morning, hallelujah. Yes, yes. That's why sometimes my husband he put my sock away because my back be hurting so bad because I put it away. But at the same time, I be saying, God, be the glory. Yes. To God be the glory. Yes. And I just walk. Yes. And I get up every morning and I just walk. Yes. And I just say, Lord, yes. I thank you for the healing. Yes. I'm already thanking you because I know demons tremble at the sound of your name. A name that's above every name.
because the devil, I understood this in my walk, y'all. Listen, I understood the devil is doing his job 24-7. Yeah. 24 hours of the day, he's seeking. He's walking, seeking to and fro and seeing who he can devour. And he's messing with the Christians first. Yeah, yeah they say they love God. Yeah, they say they, they happy all of them. They say they serving him all of Let me touch their finances and see what they say. Let me tell them that they, they, their life's going to be turned off. Let me see what they say. Oh, I ain't got no money to sell. Uh huh, yeah. Being a part. 
partaker of the increase, I mean the inheritance, inheritance of the saints of light. God said we are the inheritance. Yes. Everything that he has is ours. All. Yeah. We're joint heirs with Christ. Yes. Joint heirs. Do you guys know what joint heirs mean? Yeah. When your family has something and they write it down on a piece of paper, they yeah. have property. Yeah. And they have property and they write it and they give it to you. That means that they had a car in the house and all that good stuff and money in the bank and you have to. All right. So our daddy have everything. Everything. So if he got everything, I he know. should have everything. Nobody in here should be lacking. But guess what? We all lacking because we don't give. Not only because we don't give, it's because we don't serve each other. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, shall be given unto your bosom. But so many people think, oh, God is going to rain from heaven. This is so good. No, no. We're going to help each other. That's what they talked about in Acts. They brought everything to the altar. And whatever was needed, they distributed. Whatever. You might not need money at this time. You might need clothes. You might not need clothes, you might need food, whatever it is you need. That's how God works. He ain't no particular person. He does not finances all the time. But so many people have their minds stuck on finances. No. It's about whatever you in your body. Unto God, that's being a servant, that's giving to. So many people think that I just gotta give my no. Give God you. Right. Let your will be done for him, yeah. and he'll judge. Yeah. Not you, because you might not have the money. You, you might not have a job, but keep working and serving until you get it, and then when you get it, you get it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's talking about, being a light, who have delivered us from the power of darkness. Glory be to God. We was once lost. We was once sinners. We were once did stuff that we weren't supposed to do. Long, long time ago. We did that stuff. He said, but he brought us from darkness and have translated us into his kingdom of his son. That means all our sins was transferred unto him. We ain't sinners no more. But we keep thinking we sinners because when we mess up, we go into the corner and we go pray. Oh, I don't feel worthy. When you mess up, get back up and keep walking. As soon as you mess up, just like this line is right here, you can be right over here and you just mess up. Sit right back over here as soon as you think about it. Jump right back in righteousness with God. Don't let the devil trick your mind and say you messed up. Stand in righteousness. So you fall. We all sin and come short of the glory of God. But we're not sinners. We've been translated. Our sins is already gone. And when it happened a long time ago, now we got sins no more. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, we mess up. But guess what? That's just a mess up when you in Christ Jesus. Y'all know my faith. Romans 8. There is therefore no condemnation. To those that in Christ Jesus who walk out of the flesh. Yeah. You ain't got to worry about nothing if you ain't Christ. Right. You just keep walking. That's all you got to do. And let God do the rest. So you mess up. So you have bad thoughts. So you get angry. I was getting angry all the folks in my kitchen. So, uh, <laughs> But I thank and praise God. He said, I got you. That's right. Kids, all 300 of some kids all day long. And they coming in and out. And I'm studying meditating on that word that I'm using. Jesus. Study meditating. Study rolling that thing over. As he said, blessed is the man that walk, standing in God. But don't sit in the seat of the sinners. Nor the corner. The scornful. Nor that. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. you like that tree? Uh, Rivers of water. Yeah. And it's going to bring forth fruit in your face. Yeah. So whatever it is you need, you're going to get it. But you got to remember, you got to keep 
on walking. You got to keep on loving. You got to keep on sowing because see, it takes all of that. So many people think it's just take our poor to church. No, it ain't just about church. That's why our motto is Jesus is not a religion. He's a lifestyle. You have to do this every day. You got to pick this thing up every day. And you got to roll it over. And you got to let him know, Lord, you are my shepherd. You got to know I ain't worried about the tears and all of that that happened out there that night and day. I ain't worried about that because I know your angels are kept around me. Being my shield and buckler. But you got to let him know that. That's fellowshipping with him. By sitting with him and understanding who he is. Yeah. And not only that, when he said translated for his kingdom, for his son, in whom we have redemption, come on, Holy Ghost, through his blood. Why are we still worried about stuff? Why we, we got redemption through his blood? That redemption means forgiveness of sins. That means. Shall I continue to see the grace man bow? No. Shall I continue to do this even though I know it's wrong? No. no. If you know it's wrong, stop. But if you can't stop, ask God to help you stop it. Because remember, it's the process. Deliverance is definite. Deliverance is a process. You have to understand. Deliverance take time. It's not going to just fall off. Yeah. So many people, I hear it when they, when they come here and they say, I'm just not ready for church right now. I say, why are you not ready? I'm just not ready right now because I want to know. You think you got to get yourself together. But every time you think you got to get yourself together, it's going to take long and long. But when you do that,
through my blood. Amen. Forgiveness of sins. Whom is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of the creation. John 1 1 said, In the beginning was God. I mean, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was. <laughs> In the beginning was the word. <laughs> and the word was God. Take your time. Take your we time. We gotta understand that. He was the creation of all. He was there in the beginning. And then when you drop down to the 14th verse, he said, and he came flesh and he dwelt in us. We beheld him. He was the creator. But get this. Because he's the creator, great is he that is in you. That he is in the word. Yeah. So if he the creator, guess what? We're the creator too. Yeah. Just like he spoke this world into existence. When he said, let there be light. Yeah. You can do that on your same situation. Yeah. I don't care what's going on. Yeah. All you can do is speak and say, let there be light. And light is going to manifest. Well, all right, all right. Because you spoke it. Then no hands create light. You know, he has created the grasses and the trees. He spoke it out of his mouth. And he said, the same thing I do, you can do. Greater works you won't do than me. Because I've given you the power. But guess what? We feel like we're so powerless. It's because we don't utilize it. We don't pick this thing up. We don't understand that the power is in the word. And when you spend time with the word, you'll get the power from on high. That's where it's coming from. It ain't coming from you. He said God was the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible, whether you see it or not, it don't make a difference. He made it invisible, whether that be thorns, oh, he got my bar right here, whether it be demons or principal. Come on, Holy Ghost. If he created all that stuff, and later on, it's safe for himself. He created all that. I'm going to get to that part. He created all that stuff for himself. And not only that, he created it. He got power and dominion. He said, I gave you power and dominion. You got that same power that I had. So when something is going on, you can tell the devil, shut up. I'm not participating. Get out of me right now. Though I may be aching right now. So I may not be feeling good, but I'm going to church because I'm going to serve you. Yeah. I might not have no clothes, but naked I came in this world, naked I'm going to leave. Yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You got to understand, it's real, y'all. Demons are real and we got power over them. Yeah. We ain't got to worry about the devil. No. We give him too much power. Yeah. We got the power. But we're not utilizing the power that we have. Because we're not reading, people of God. We're not seeking God's wisdom. We're not seeking God's understanding. We do, I'm not saying nothing about going to school. It's okay if you want to go to school. But go to school and seek God too. Absolutely, do them both. Because when all that money starts coming in, you're going to need his guidance. And know where to plan it. You can't just plan it in any old kind of way. I found that out the hard way. I used to sow like crazy. Somebody said, I need my rent paid. I need to get this, my security problem. I need my lights back on. I need food. I didn't care. I just Lord yeah. Jesus. I love them saying, you're just trying to save everything. You, you can't be God in people's life. I said, I'm trying to be God. I just want to help. I mean, I just want people to understand that they can be blessed too. Yes, they is. All they gotta do is watch. Watch. Do what I do. So into God's kingdom like never before. Amen. There's nothing he won't withhold from you. Amen. Nothing. Right. I was just telling him out the other day. My husband was like, "What do you want for Christmas?" I want nothing for Christmas. I got everything. They only put on everything. Then he took me to dress for me. <laughs> what did he take me? <laughs> That's the story that gets me in trouble every time. I went in there and I must have tried on five outfits. I didn't even pay attention to the price tag. See, that's the kind of guy I serve. 
Because he said, if you seek ye first the kingdom, I will pull nothing from you. And I'm not trying to be fashy or boasty or not. I'm just boasting out my debt. This is what I'm doing. Because see, when you give, he give back. Press down, shake it together. Like, oh, he does all of that. But he does it for you. I said, no. As I was trying to mow, I started looking at the price tag. I said, oh, Jesus. My husband said, okay, put it back because you know you ain't got money for all that. I went back and I said, oh, I closed the door. I said, Jesus. <laughs> 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 I said, oh, Jesus. I began to talk to him. Remember when you told me? If I just see you, remember you told me? <laughs> I just began to talk to God and I began to confess what I had already knew. <laughs> and I said, God, you promised you. Promise. So shall my word be to go forth out of my mouth and shall not return unto me void. That's what you said. Amen. You said this. And I was trying to figure out how I was going to pay for that thing. He said, split it up. He said, split it up. Split it up. He gave me wisdom. Amen. Don't just try to use one car. Use two. Split it up. Amen. We got about three bank accounts. <laughs> one of them might not got that much in it, but that one got some split it up. I said, boy, I didn't, I didn't know that had that in there, but God knew it was in there. Yeah. That's why he told me. With my mind, I want to know what's going on. Because my husband looking at me like crazy. Like, she, she. <laughs> <laughs> and it went through. And I said, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of God we serve. Yes, yes. He just does that. But then back into the word. Come on, my husband. I didn't 
devil's out of power is going to do. But not in the church. He's supposed to be nice. I went back to my pastor and said, what's wrong with the people? He said, man, everybody in church ain't saying for me. Man, all you need to do is right now. And you put that little note, you put it on the altar and you pray. I said, Pastor, I don't understand that because that don't make no sense. How they gonna tell me? And they gonna this this was an evangelist and she had a, a house thing and 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 because I was dating Barry, he can bear me, he wasn't my husband. And because I was dating him, she gonna tell everybody at the church they didn't come to her house, but I didn't come. How you gonna say everybody can come and I can't? And you an evangelist. What's wrong with her? I ain't understand it. I didn't understand it. But I just kept praying and I kept praying. I did what my pastor said. I put that letter in there. I said, Evangelist King don't like me. I don't know why Evangelist King don't like me. No, I think she don't like me because I'm dating Mary and, and everything. And I think she's not going to like me because I'm sleeping with him. But it's okay. But I don't, I don't know what to do, but I did. And I put all that in that note. I put it in there on the altar. And I prayed. Because I didn't understand why she didn't like me. And then she started turning the other sisters against me too. Yeah. I used to be with Sister Dot. I used to help her with the Sunday school department. That's how I met his boy. I was to help with the Sunday school teacher. I'm a vacation Bible study. She told me I can't even do that no more. I said, what? I can't do that no more? The only thing I was able to do was assist the pastor because he had a basketball team in the summertime. As being coach. But all the other little stuff that the women did in the kitchen cooking, I ain't cooking anyway. But all that other stuff that they did, I couldn't do none of that. I said, that don't make no sense. Then I would hear that. Man, everybody in the church ain't saying, still didn't understand. But before I left Gary in the house, she came to me and she said, you know what, for so long, I hate you. For so long, I didn't like you. And I didn't understand that she hugged me, and I just felt everything just yeah. And because I prayed for his wife, I prayed because she was his, um, your wife, your wife was her goddaughter. Yeah, she was her goddaughter. She said, I prayed for her to get saved and for her to bring her husband and her children into the church. I prayed and I fasted for her. Jesus. But guess what? She never made it in those doors. But he is, and so was his children. But see, God removed her and put me there. And she was mad. And she took it out on me. And I didn't understand. And I said, why? Took that out on me. She said, because I prayed. And when I prayed, she wouldn't do what she did. God moved her out of the way. And he put me in that, and now my godson was out in the church. All preacher. And their father. You gotta be careful what you ask God for. Because see, that was her prayer one night. I didn't know nothing about her prayer with God. And see, God will do what you ask him to do, but sometimes people won't do what they're supposed to do. So he removed. And when he removes them, he puts somebody else and you have no idea. Why am I feeling the way I'm feeling? I'm talking about people in the church. But we got power over that stuff, y'all. I was able to stand through all that because I wanted to run like crazy. I said, I'm tired of these church folks. I said, Mama, I'm out of here. My mama said, go back. I said, I can't take this. But not understanding what it is. That's why I kept digging in. And when I got to this class scene and he told me, I got power over power, the devil. Power over. Yeah. Power over demons. Power. Yeah. The demons. I got the authority. They don't have the authority. I have the authority. I can speak and they got to go. I said, wow. That's some stuff I got to tell everybody this. Everybody got to know they got this stuff right here. God ain't no joke. When he said, seek ye first the kingdom, he means that thing. You seek him, he'll let you know. They ain't got nothing on you. They can't touch you. I don't care what's going on. They can't touch you because they got to leave. 
but you got to tell them. But there's some things you got to do in order for you to tell them. Don't think you can just come to the devil because you remember. Uh, what, what's that movie with that, with, with that priest? Not exorcist, Constantine. When that priest didn't have the power, yeah. and he thought he had the power, but he didn't have it because that devil said, I know you. I know you don't. I know who you are. But when the power walked in the room, he knew. He knew when that power walked in there. The devil ought to know how she woke up this morning. I thought I was sitting messed up. She's going to call him right now. Hey, She's going to tell him what you read today. She's going to get them focused on the Bible. See, he know. When I wake up in the morning, first thing I'm going to say, what you read? What you spending time with God? What he say? Because I want to see if he, you know what he said and you lined up. Like I told Bishop Friday, you be the only office. You send two texts now. He said one in the evening and one in the morning. So I'm like, hey, I didn't give me two words like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to check myself, well, you don't search him in the evening times. So I said, okay. Very me, I'm sorry. And Friday, when we came home, we beat you official. We started reading the word. <laughs> I want to get to too. too. <laughs> That's the kind of God we serve. He'll let you do it in joy yes. and love because he'll understand that whatever you need, Whatever it is, whatever you need from God, he said, all you got to do is ask and you shall receive. Yeah. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you because I'm letting you know. And, and he said before all things, and he said by him all things exist because of him. And he is the head of the body, the church, who at the beginning was the firstborn of the dead. That means he died and he rose back and he got up with all power that all things might be yeah, it is a preeminence. And I like that when he said preeminence, and I'm getting ready to close because I had to look that thing up. Preeminence. What do that mean, preeminence? Then Mary had to chew on that thing. I don't know what that means. And it says the fact of surpassing all others is seniority. God has seniority. Yes. And I look at the compassion. What does that mean? Exceeding or being greater than. God is exceeding and greater than anything. God has the authority above all. Because everything was created by Him. Then when it says the it says the fact the state of being older or higher in position. I said, read your heirs with Christ. That means. We got that same thing, y'all. We got that premise. We, we, we got it. Because we join hands with Christ. And what he give us, all we have to do is make disciples of each other. We pass it on. But see, what we mess up is we don't pass it on. We try to hold it to ourselves. We try to keep all that stuff. I know the word. I don't need to read the word. I already know what to say in the word. But I understand just because you know what your power is. Let me tell you, let me see you make the devil move. Because when you make it move, then you got power. When you get up from there, I remember when we was getting on game and Deacon back there couldn't even sit down. I mean, stand up. He was in so much pain. And I think it was two weeks ago, we had came to the church and I see him. I said, you standing up. Stand up. It 
up in the morning and spending time with him, it's activated. And you can move forward. And I know y'all probably tired of me saying that, but that's how I got mine. And how I got mine, I'm going to share it to you so you can get yours. I want you to know what I had to do to get what God has for me. And I just, in my closing, I just want everybody to understand that we can't get this world's wisdom. God said we got to get his wisdom. We got to get his wisdom. And we got to get his knowledge. And when we get his knowledge and his wisdom, the sky's the limit. Ain't nothing impossible for God. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all. It don't even matter. But guess what? He's going to do it through you. In each and every one of us, he's going to do it.